Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench. Today we're going to be talking about text breakup with text animators and expressions. By the way, we made shirts. Also, they're pre-worn. Just kidding. All right, so you know those cool text animations where it looks like somebody's keyframed every single letter? They have like everything like shift around and it looks like really neat. Kind of like this, but good. Well, I started working on a little system that would actually let you do that with text animators. And this is kind of what I came up with. So I'm going to show you how I built that and then how I evolved it into something not shitty. All right, so let's bring up this expression. I have this in Expressionist. The beta has run out, so hopefully soon we'll get a new version that will work with 2018. So until then, we can at least load this up in here and see it. We just won't get the nice coloring. So you can see over here, I have two sliders set up. One called Slide and the other one called Seed. Basically, slide is the animation component of this thing, and as we've done in the past, it's going to be a range from 0 to 1. 1 being the characters are slid as far away as they can be, and 0 being the rest position. And we have a seed setting so that we can change the random components of our animation into something that we like. So this expression is pretty simple. We're setting up a variable s, and we're going to set it to that seed slider, and then to that s, we're going to add the property index of this random seed. And the way we get that is we use this property, dot property group, and what property group does, if you haven't seen the tutorials, I've done that before, is basically go up in this hierarchy from like random seed here to advanced to range selector one to animator one so that we can traverse this kind of tree here. And then we're going to do dot property index to get the index number of that piece. So here we're going to go up four times. So we basically get this animator number. Since we're going to have more than one animator, we'd like to know what animator number we are. That way we get a different random value for every one of these. And that means we're going to select a different letter because this random seed affects what our range is selected. As you can see, we have randomized order on, and our range is actually set from zero to one using index, so we select one character. All right, so the only other thing we have on here is our position that's animated. This is the position in the text animator, not the position for the layer. So let's bring that into Expressionist. And you can see here we're using S for the slide slider, and then for some reason you can't multiply arrays, so we're gonna do value zero, so it's the initial value that we have set as position and multiply that by slide. So since slide goes from one to zero, we're gonna have these animated as far as they can be. And then at zero, they're gonna go all the way back to their original position. And we do the same thing for value one in the other side of the array. So in each one of these animators, I've set up a different value here. So you can see this one's negative 170 and that moves them all around. And then I just duplicated this animator a bunch of times. So at some point, every one of these is affected. And that lets us move them back in like that but I wanted a couple of different things. One, I wanted random values. I didn't want to have to go through and select and change all of these animators. I want to just be able to duplicate the animator a bunch of times and change the seed around and then just get something that we like. So I set about doing that. So if we look at version two here, you can see this one actually uses random values and it does two steps. It's got a little bit more bouncy easing, but that one just is kind of an in-between step. One thing I will show you that's super helpful when you're doing these property group things, because sometimes there are invisible groups, so you can't just open up a tree and see how many steps you need to go up all the time, especially if you're in a shape layer, is that I set up a different text layer over here into the source text property. Let's pull this into Expressionist too, why not? I can't scale this over. Beta restrictions. All right, so we have this comp dot layer, workbench, blah, blah, blah. So I'm pointing this at the property that we want to check. So in this case, that's all up to this portion, this whole thing up to offset. Don't worry about that. Just pick whip the thing that you want. And then to the end of that, you're going to add dot property group and then usually I just start with one dot name. So as you do that, as I'll show you right here, if we go one, you see that we're at range selector, two, we're at selectors, and three, we're at animator A1. A1, it's how animation is done. That's the one I want, because what I'm gonna duplicate is the animator. So to get all of my random settings, I wanna base them off of this thing's property index. So basically when you set these back up to the end of the part that you're actually trying to modify, you're just going to do dot property group with whatever this number is. And then instead of name, you're going to use property index. So that's how the rest of these are set up. So if you look at this one, this is just a different version of how those things go. And the random values are staggered a little bit more. So then the final version that you might've seen on Instagram, we're basically doing the same thing. So let me show you how these are set up. The first thing here is I just have all these different text layers set to one layer that has the text in it. So if we were to turn this on, you'd see that that's just workbench. So we'll load up Expressionist again. We'll click on this offset and we'll bring that one in. So unlike the previous one where we basically have randomized turned on and it picks a random character, 
in these versions, I wanted to pick every character sequentially. Now you probably could do this maybe even in one animator with an expression selector. I haven't gone that far into it. I've just played around with this idea in order to make this text animator. So basically what we're doing here is we still have an indexed range from zero to one characters. And on the offset of that, we're applying this expression. We have this property dot property group three, which basically gets a text animator that this range selector is in. And then we take its property index and then we subtract one. The reason why we subtract one is that the range offset thing here is zero based. So when you have it set from zero to one and your offset is zero, you're selecting the first character. When your offset is one, you're selecting the second character and so on. So that's it for the selection portion of that. And then to position here, we're adding another expression. And this one is far more complicated. So as you can see over here, I have a whole bunch of different sliders and then a bunch of different effects. But basically I've taken what we built in the first one and I've duplicated it out so that we have individual sliders for each set of animators. So now that I have this up, I'm gonna actually move this out of the way real quick and I'm gonna close this up. And then open this back. And you can see I just have a bunch of different animators. In this case, one per letter. I haven't gone through the trouble of actually making this so that you can just put in a bunch of animators and then it automatically selects them all, but you could probably do that. In this case, I just have nine animators for each side. I've named them A and B. So we have A one through nine, B and one through nine. So let's bring this back over. All right, so you can see we have slide A, slide B, and as before, those control when our actual animation is happening. Then we have our seed, so we can change it up. And then we have a maximum distance for the A group and a maximum distance for the B group. And you'll see in a minute how those work, but basically we're gonna have a random value and it's gonna be up to this distance. And then we've also added a delay for each group. So we have a frame delay. So this first group is delayed by three frames so that every letter animates three frames behind the previous one. And then I just have some things to style this text. All right, so the bulk of our stuff here is grabbing in all of these sliders. And then just to make it a little bit easier on us, we're grabbing in that property group for the text animator that we're within. The only other thing to note in these little slider declarations is that the frame delay is multiplied by that property value. So this is what offsets each version by the next thing. So say we're in property index one and frame delay A is three. So this one will be three. So for two, it'll be six and so on. So then I named this thing amp for amplitude. Although really it's still a delay, but it'll be common amplitude later on. But right now we're taking that animation setting for slide A and we're going to get its value at time. And we're going to do time minus that delay that we set up times this comp dot frame duration. And that basically is just going to convert our frames to time. Because if this is 12, we don't want to subtract 12 because 12 time minus 12 would be time minus 12 seconds. Okay. So then in the next one, we're going to set up seed random. And we're going to set it to our property index that we already figured out, which is our animator number. And then to that, we're going to add our seed. And we're going to set timeless to true. So that means we're not going to pull random values every frame, just the first frame. So then because I no longer need our delay setting, we're going to use D for distance. And we're going to set that equal to random from zero to M, which is our max distance times our amplitude. So our amplitude again is our animation from one to zero at the proper delay for whichever animator this is. And then in the next line, we just have if random from zero to one is greater than 0.5, we're going to do zero comma that distance value. Otherwise we're going to do D comma zero. So basically depending on this random setting, we're either going to move horizontally or vertically. And that's pretty much it. The B ones are set up the same way. They just use the B values from our sliders. So after that you duplicate them one per letter and then you have animation. The only reason that these do different animations is because they're in different layers and different layers are going to pull different random values. All of these layers are affected differently. And some of these you can see I have displacement map set up kind of like the last couple of glitch tutorials that we've done. And if you're curious, our mat looks like this. It's basically 50% gray where our text sits in the middle. So anytime things move out of here, they get distorted. Let's turn that back off. It's basically the same thing that's happening for the gray version. And that's pretty much it. When you pull all of that together, it kind of looks like some kind of street fighter looking thing. As a matter of fact, if we go up here and we double click this, we could probably do, that seems to have the same amount of letters. All right. So that's how you set that up. If you want to get a jump start on how to set this all up, you can grab the project file from our store and that'll come with everything that you see here, including the background that's moving in the background. And if you want to grab one of those shirts, I'll link it below, but you can also check our website under the products page. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. We've actually been keeping up with that ourselves. And as always, I am Joe and we'll see you next week. Bye.
Why do my shirts keep changing? Can, can I get a little help over here? Hello?